What's going on, everybody? Justin here with From Zero to Studio, and today we're talking editing and specifically crossfading. Are your crossfades having a negative impact on your music? Let's discuss. So we have a guitar part here that was comped together from multiple takes, and I want to talk about how you should go about crossfading these together. Now, many people might just highlight the part and hit their crossfade button. Maybe that's the X on your keyboard like in Cubase, or it might be a different function, or maybe you found it through the menu. Either way, the generic crossfade most often is going to put that fade between the two segments. Now, the issue with that, especially in a direct recorded guitar part like this, is that we're reducing that transient of that next guitar hit. And what this is going to do is cause your guitar part to not have as much impact on all those pick attacks. If I go ahead and undo that, you can see we got some information right there spiking up. And when we put that crossfade in, we're reducing the level of that transient. Now, to make sure you're not losing any of the punch or impact on any of those pick attacks, we want to make sure to preserve that. So what you could do, you could either just drag this back or you could slide the whole crossfade over. And then you could just see where that pick attack starts and slide the end of that crossfade up to that point so that way the transient is preserved. Now you might also have a feature in whatever recording software you're using that allows you to place the crossfade prior to the split. Now I do have that set up in Cubase and I can just hit Control X and it's gonna place that crossfade prior to the split. Now you can see in this instance, that is right where that transient starts, but typically what I like to do on direct guitar parts and with a lot of other instruments as well is pull that crossfade back just a little bit so that way we make sure we're still capturing that full pick attack or the full transient on whatever instrument it is. Let's A-B those really quick. I could tell the difference when that crossfade was crossing over top of the transient. There was just a little more punch when that fade was prior to that split. And this same thing goes for whatever instrument you're applying crossfades to. Maybe you've edited up your drum parts and you're about to crossfade all those sections so we don't have any pops and clicks. Just make sure that crossfade gets before the split and pull it back just a little bit so we make sure that we're capturing all of that information. So that's one way you can ensure that all of your edit points flow seamlessly from one to the next. And also you can get more in depth with this and start changing the shape of the fades and even play around with different fade lengths to find out what works best for the two parts you're trying to combine. So hopefully this was helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, just drop them down below. And also, as you're working on improving your recording and mixing skills, if you want a guide that'll walk you through every step of the process from songwriting and recording up through mixing and mastering, you can download the roadmap to a Radio Ready song. This guide covers five steps that'll help you take your song from sounding like a demo to sounding pro, and you can download it absolutely free as my gift to you by going to from zero to studio.com slash roadmap or by clicking the link below in the description and you could start improving how you're creating and capturing your music. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. I'll see you on another video soon.